Uh, okay, it's working. <laughs> um, can you tell me your name and a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Jacob Fritz. I'm currently a junior in the Animal Science program here at Iowa State. Um, I'm looking to add another major and a minor this semester. I'm thinking about adding microbiology as my second major and then uh, getting a minor in ruminant nutrition. And I'm looking to do graduate work in okay. a couple years or so. So, um, as I understand it, you are one of the two presidents of the Minecraft Club. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what the Minecraft Club is? The ISU Minecraft Club is a group of students who like to play the game called Minecraft. Minecraft is an open world building sandbox game. I often call it Legos for adults. And that's essentially what it is. You can take all these different sorts of blocks and you can create structures. And we've had people create skyscrapers on our server. We've had people make cathedrals. We've had people dig out huge caverns and make these secret underground laboratories. And it's Minecraft is only limited by the imagination of the person playing it. Very cool. So can you tell me about how it came to be that you're one of the presidents? Well. The other president, Keith Abel, and he first introduced me to Minecraft. I had no idea what it was until the fall of 2010. And he was, we lived in the same uh, residence hall. We both lived in Hellser on the second floor. And he was literally right across the hall. And he comes to me one day and he says, Dude, you got to check out this game. Really? What's it called? It's called Minecraft. Well, what is it? And he showed me the game from there. And last fall, Keith had built a server for people that could get on and play Minecraft together, and we kind of started talking about the idea of, hey, Minecraft's a pretty popular game. Why don't we see if there's other people on campus that share this interest? And so we started sending out messages to people. We put up flyers and stuff, and we said, just come to the first meeting and we'll see how it goes. And at the first meeting, we had about 25 people show up. and Quite a few of those people have stayed with us through all the way through this first year of the club. And so far in the first week of classes, I've had two freshmen join. And with Club Fest coming up, I'm hoping that that number just skyrockets. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, so this leads me to believe that Iowa State has its own Minecraft server? Well, Iowa, the university itself does not. Okay. Right now, the servers that we have are people that own them, and they say, okay, we'll open up my server and let other people have them. Because right now, our club just doesn't have the funds to build a server. Mm -hmm. And we're not just about getting together and playing games, because Minecraft is also written in a programming language. It's written in Java. And a lot of the people in our club are engineers. We have a couple of computer engineering majors. We've had people that have taught themselves this language to uh, create mods to the game, and that just builds onto it. And we also have the aspect of hardware issues. We have software issues from time to time, too. And the club works together on resolving these hardware and software issues. And we're, we're kind of hoping that we can eventually get a budget from GSB so that we can afford to get better servers, have better parts, and allow more people to get on and join this community. Okay. Um, do you have any current projects you'd like to talk about? Well, right now our server has 8 gigabytes of RAM, and we are currently maxing that out. So we can't really have any really big projects right now simply because we're already maxing out our system with 20 people. However, one of our big projects that we've always talked about was recreating campus inside this video game. And not quite a one for one, but more of a feel. Feel sort of based, you know, when you're walking, oh, it feels like I'm actually walking next to Gilman, or it feels like I'm walking next to Curtis Hall. And we've already decided we're not doing any of the dorms because they'd literally be a two by three room with two beds in it. That's all it'd be. But that's one of our big projects. Another one that we've kind of thought about doing is uh, 
it's an open world zombie kind of survival, and that comes with some mods, and we're thinking about getting a few different servers up once we have the funds to do so, and building these worlds, and people can jump on and go between worlds and play with the people that they want to. Very cool. It sounds a lot like um, those guys that recreated Middle Earth in Minecraft. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know about them, but... Uh, I heard from some people not yesterday, but the day before I was visiting my girlfriend, she's a CA in Friday, and one of the people that I walked by the room, he said that some of his friends were building a replica of Hogwarts in Minecraft. And they're still trying to figure out the logistics of getting the movie bookcase to work, but they're going to get a movie bookcase to work. Very cool. So um, tell me a little bit more about how the club works. What are some requirements to be in it? Well. One of the requirements to be in it is you have to have some kind of interest in Minecraft. I mean, we obviously don't want people to show up to a club meeting that aren't going to be interested in it. I, it's not me trying. We are more than open mm -hmm. to having new people come in that don't know anything about Minecraft. If you have even the slightest interest in it, we are more than willing to show you how the game works. And another thing is the minimum GPA requirements for any person that's in a student organization 2.0. Um, we do have club dues and those are just to help try and pay for some of our server parts right now. It's ten dollars a semester so it's not extreme. Mm -hmm. I was in a couple of clubs and the dues were pretty extreme in some of them but it's just that you gotta come to meetings every once in a while because we do talk about stuff in meetings that doesn't get put on into our Facebook group which we do have a Facebook group. Um, some things just don't get remembered when I send out emails, mass emails to the club saying, hey, we need this. And it's kind of important if you come to meetings because it also allows you to interact with the, these people. Oh, I know you as this name on the server, but I've never seen you face to face. And then these people end up becoming really good friends. We've had that happen with a lot of our club members. Very cool. Um, so when and where does it meet? We generally meet here in the Memorial Unions on Sundays because that's the one day we've found that a lot of people have open. And right now, last semester we were meeting at 6 o'clock p.m. And we've kind of bumped that time up this semester to about 3 o'clock p.m. And they're here in the MU. Right now, the first meeting that we have for this Sunday, which will be the 26th, if I remember right, uh, it's at 3 p.m. It's in 3558 upstairs and here, here in the Memorial Union. I'm going to try to see if we can get a bigger room because that room can only fit 25 people and sometimes we have a lot more show up to the meetings than that. Okay. Um, so what, as a president, is your job in the club? Obviously you helped create it, mm -hmm. but what do you do now? Mainly what I do now is Keith and I have kind of split the responsibilities of the president in our situation. Keith knows a lot more about computers than I do. So he kind of takes care of the technical aspects of keeping the server running, making sure that all the software is up to date, that sort of thing. My side of it is I kind of say Keith's the technical wizard and I'm the people person. I try to make sure things get worked out between club members. I'm the one uh, I'm also the risk management officer, even though we really don't have risk management when playing a computer game. The worst we might have to worry about is electrical shop or something like that. Um, I also am the kind of delegator of tasks on the server when we're working on a project. I say, okay, we need a couple people to work on this, we need some people to work on this, because we have built entire cities before. Not, not huge cities. But still, cities that require lighting, they require, uh, in Minecraft, you have a food bar, and if you don't eat, you lose health. So we have people that have to maintain either private farms on a large enough scale to feed everybody, or public farms, which actually one of our members had a giant watermelon factory. It was all automated. You could go over, hit a button, and all the watermelon would be harvested. And Probably my last task on the server is to try to come up with these fun ideas for people to build. Like in Minecraft there's a game called Spleef. Mm -hmm. And the object of the game is to dig out the block from underneath your opponent, causing them to fall down and they lose. So that was another thing that we worked on as a community as a 
as one of our really big projects was working on this spleef arena because you have to get it designed just right, you have to get the mods implemented, you have to have all these different reward systems set up for when the person wins. And it's a lot of implementation on Keith and my part, as well as the people that are some of the newer members and older veteran members to kind of bring this community together and bring people into the games and it's a very good social interaction. Cool. Well, um, I guess the best way to close this interview would be to ask you a pretty fun question. What is the most extreme thing you've seen in a Minecraft, Minecraft server? Now, would this be our server or any servers that I've been on? Your whole experience of Minecraft. I remember when I was first really getting into Minecraft, this would have been summer of 2011. I was on a server where somebody had built what is called a TNT cannon. Now, in Minecraft you have TNT blocks which can be used, you know, for obvious purposes, mining, that sort of thing, the name of the game, Minecraft. But also you can use it to create these magnificent creations called TNT cannons. And these cannons, with a combination of rail carts and rail tracks as well as high amounts of TNT can be used to propel people very long distances. They kind of have that fail-safe once in a while where the TNT goes off accidentally and kills you. But my most extreme experience was one time where I was in said TNT cannon and one of these server admins or administrators said, okay, here's your diamond armor. Hopefully you stay alive. And so I'm uh, kind of looking around and he says, okay, here we go, three, two, one. And all these TNT blocks drop into the proper place. And it shot my in-world character so fast that one, it automatically logged me out of the server because it thought I was cheating. And two, my Minecraft server client crashed. It was that extreme. Very cool. And I got back on the server and the people that had been watching and myself, we were all just rolling because it's just the physics behind it inside of the video game is kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Well, is there anything else you would like to add? Um, I would <laughs> like to add that we are always, well, we are always welcoming in new members. Um, I'm more than happy to show anybody around the server anytime they want to. We can get you temporarily whitelisted. We are more than happy to have anybody join our club because we're, we're a very tight, but we are also a very 